For decades, we have known the days of cheap and easily accessible oil were numbered. And make our dependence on Middle Eastern oil a thing of the past. We need a long-term energy strategy. In further dependence on foreign oil. Dependence on foreign oil. The independence we want to meet America's energy needs from America's own resources. Although alleviating the United States' dependence on foreign oil is one of the main reasons for the current focus on offshore oil drilling, energy independence is extremely unlikely. The rate of consumption in the United States, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, was around 6.87 billion barrels of oil in 2011, which equals about 18.83 million barrels per day. This is about 22% of the total world consumption. Producing all of the oil required to meet the domestic needs in this country would be near impossible. The whole idea of decreasing our foreign dependent, our dependence on foreign oil doesn't make much sense. We live in an exchange economy. Mm -hmm. If it's the least expensive for us to get oil from, from foreign countries, then that's the sensible thing to do. Perhaps there's some benefit to not being dependent on the, so dependent on the Middle East because the Middle East is so unstable. Yeah. But uh, I don't think it should be a driving uh, a driver of our policy. As you can see in this graph comprised by the US EIA, US oil production peaked around 1970. There's also projected increase in production around 2040 due to offshore and land-based oil extraction. It would have long-term consequences for our coastlines, but no short-term benefits since it would take at least 10 years to get any oil. Well, the politics may have changed, would not but lower gas prices today. It would not lower gas prices tomorrow. It would not lower gas prices this year. It would not lower gas prices five years from now. In fact, you wouldn't see any full production out of any oil drilling off the coasts until 2030. In recent months, the Department of the Interior has endorsed seismic testing in the Atlantic. This is his first step towards the further expansion of offshore drilling along the East Coast and in the Gulf of Mexico. The idea behind seismic testing is to send elastic waves into the Earth. Each layer within the Earth reflects some of the wave's energy back. These waves help geophysicists predict where oil reserves may be trapped based on wave return abnormalities. The wave emissions have adverse effects on marine animals. The waves affect their sense of hearing, which they use for avoiding predators, finding prey, and choosing migration patterns. The North Atlantic right whale is heavily influenced by these waves and is one of the most endangered of all large whales. Job creation is another reason for increasing offshore oil drilling. However, workers on oil rigs require specialized training that can be not only expensive but time consuming. Um, I mean, it's costly, it's risky. I mean, there may be oil out there, but it's going to be expensive oil once it hits the market as well. And there are so many other better ways to invest that money. And of course, there's reasons why it was um, not allowed currently. I mean, it used to be that offshore oil drilling was available anywhere in the U.S. And there was some major oil spills, and particularly the one in Santa Barbara, California in 1969. The year was 1969. The U.S. government had given permission to the Union Oil Company to drill for oil just six miles off the California coast. On January 28th, there was a blowout in the well. For 11 days, crude oil and natural gas leaked from the broken well. An oil tanker ran aground today off the nation's northernmost ice-free port. Valdez, Alaska. One of the worst oil spills in U.S. history, the accident also exposed the inattention to oil industry safety. We will consider whatever it takes to keep you whole. And to do more to stop future spills. The Gulf spill might already be as much as three times worse than the Exxon Valdez disaster. It 
could turn out to be the worst environmental disaster in more than 20 years. Thousands of gallons of crude oil are oozing into the Louisiana coastal waters 10 days now after that oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico. Being spilled at a rate of 5,000 barrels every day. And at the current rate of leakage, this spill would eclipse the Exxon Valdez disaster in Alaska back in 1989. Large oil spills such as these have enormous environmental implications. To this day, workers are still cleaning up tar off the beaches surrounding the Gulf of Mexico from the BP oil spill in 2010. Even worse, remnants of the Exxon Valdez oil spill were found stuck between boulders on beaches completely unchanged after 25 years. The Center for Biological Diversity reported that an estimated 82,000 birds 6,000 sea turtles, 26,000 marine mammals, and an immeasurable number of fish, plants, and terrestrial organisms were either killed or harmed by the BP oil spill alone. However, the more common and pressing issue offshore oil drilling causes the environment are smaller spills, discharges, and disturbances that happen on a daily basis on oil rigs. These rigs do not only leak oil, but they also disrupt seafloor sediment, destroy delicate ecosystems, and emit harmful gases and wastes such as sodium bicarbonate, starch, and zinc, along with human waste that come with having a full crew on these rigs. Almost each year in office, President Obama has proposed subsidy cuts to fossil fuels. However, Congress has never proposed voting on all of them. Also, in 2012, the Senate defeated an act that would have eliminated tax subsidies to the Big Five oil producers, BP, Exxon, Chevron, Shell, and ConocoPhillips. What you want is a situation where the oil companies think, if I spill anything here, I'm responsible for all the damage done and it could break the company. Then they would think about it more care. I think that's going to be a more effective way of regulating what they do. And notice there again you have the difficulty of um, a lack of private ownership. The, the fish that swim freely in the, in the ocean can't readily be owned, and so you don't have an owner saying, you've damaged my fish, and you have to stop. Right. So we get into these collective action problems. Okay. Congress is going to be mostly influenced by the oil companies, I'm afraid. Right. And that's going to be the main reason that they don't have really sensible regulation. The division of federal subsidies in 2008 is as shown in this chart. $70.2 billion for traditional fossil fuels is shown in black. $16.5 billion for corn ethanol in yellow, and $12.2 billion for traditional renewables in green. Traditional renewables include solar photovoltaics, concentrated solar power, wind, hydro, geothermal, and biomass, with solar and wind having the most energy potential. If somebody comes up with a good enough technology so it looks like this really is going to make solar pay, venture capitalists will pay for it. But the trouble we have now is Congress is shoveling money at people who don't have a good technology. Whether or not any money should go to renewables should be decided by entrepreneurs in the marketplace who have their own money at stake. If one analyzes the costs and benefits in this situation, offshore oil drilling expansion is not the best move for our future. Offshore oil drilling will, in theory, drop gas prices for Americans and create some jobs. Drilling may alleviate some foreign reliance on oil, but not completely. However, these things may not even happen and the costs associated with drilling, such as spills that harm the environment, outweigh the supposed benefits. The best way to reduce foreign dependence is to reduce consumption. So I don't think offshore oil drilling is going to help close the, the uh, energy gap, the supply gap that we have. And it's, I think, misleading to expect that we can drill our way out of the, the divergence that we have between production and consumption currently. And what I think people are really surprised to learn about is that U.S. oil production actually peaked in 1970. So clearly the additional production can aid the country and keep dollars home rather than sending them away, but it won't um, ever close the gap. I, I, the only way you can close the gap is to reduce consumption drastically. This is not the long-term answer. You know, the oil drilling is it's going to be... Um, so they find, you know, a few more years worth of oil supply, but unless they move to renewable alternative sources, then it's just a short-term answer.